Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to the Buffett and Beyond Stock Selection Method based on clean surplus accounting. And this lecture was developed by Dr. Joseph Belmonte. And remember, folks, if you want to live on the beach like Jimmy Buffett, you really have to learn how to invest like Warren Buffett. Now, I just want to let you know that we have credibility behind this methodology, and Buffett and Beyond is registered with the National Association of State Boards of Accountancy as a Quality Assurance Service sponsor of continuing professional education for accountants with this method, and we are registered with the state of Florida for a two-credit accounting and auditing seminar for CPAs. And let me introduce myself. I have a doctor of business and finance from Nova Southeastern University. And folks, I went back to school midlife just to study the stock market and nothing else. I had enough education up to that point, And I just wanted to learn more about the market and how to implement certain strategies. My MBA is from Florida Atlantic University. And I was a former associate professor of finance at Northwood University. Now, what's our goal? Well, we want to be able to outperform the market averages because not too many people do that. And we want to select stocks that are growing the fastest and the most consistently. Now, 96% of professional money managers cannot outperform the S&P over any 10-year period. And folks, we are able to do that. And you can follow our methodologies with our subscription with little or no work. Now, how do we do that? How do we outperform the S&P 500 consistently? Well, we use a model that allows us to compare and thus select stocks that are growing the fastest and most consistently. And we're talking about mostly large cap stocks. We have our portfolio made up of stocks mostly from the S&P 500 index. And we want the companies that make the most efficient use of our invested dollar. So we want companies that are growing their earnings and are doing so efficiently. And these are the companies whose stocks will appreciate faster than the market averages. Now, what is that model? And that model is called clean surplus. And does it really work? Well, the portfolio results, actual portfolios since December 2002, and these are accountant-reviewed portfolios. Our portfolio average is about 14.6% per year, with the S&P 500 gaining about 9.3% per year. So we have a 56% greater return on a yearly simple return. Compounded return since the end of 2002, our portfolio up 500 129% with the S&P up half of that. Now, the model that I'm talking about here is buy and hold. Changes, if any, are taking place on the last trading day of the year or the last trading week. And most stocks are in the S&P 500. We replace any stocks that are needed to be replaced, and then we rebalance once a year. Okay, what is clean surplus? It's an accounting methodology that is used to measure efficiency, predictability, now there's a word, predictability, and comparability. The income statement doesn't do it, the balance sheet doesn't do it, and the accounting community was searching for a return on equity that is comparable. How do we know the accounting statements don't allow for efficiency, predictability, and comparability? Well, if they did, then all the accounting professors and professionals and all the finance professors and professionals would be able to outperform the market averages. And guess what? They can't do it. Now, who teaches investment analysis? So you're going to wonder why the folks getting out of our fine universities can't outperform the S&P 500 because they are taught by accounting professors and finance professors, none of whom can outperform the averages. So they teach us numbers that are unique, not comparable to individual company. And I'm going to show you that in a second. Now, accounting numbers are used for internal control. This is why accounting doesn't work. The accounting numbers do not allow us to compare stocks and pick a portfolio that can outperform the S&P 500 because the accounting numbers are used for internal control. They must account for everything, and we demand this. They were never meant to be used to compare one company with another. They're used to compare the ratios and the numbers over time of that particular company, not to compare one company to another. However, these are the only numbers we have, and analysts use them. Now, when we look at Corporation A, 
we see that finance and accounting works within the corporation. So it has to do with that corporation. Corporation B, finance and accounting have to do with the numbers within that corporation. They are not used to compare corporation A to corporation B. However, investing is another profession altogether because with investing, we have to be able to compare corporation A to corporation B, but the finance numbers and the accounting numbers do not allow us to do that efficiently. Is there a difference? Yeah, accounting is different than finance and finance is different than investing. What is clean surplus? There are items which we call non-recurring items and also future liabilities which are not predictable because they are unique to an individual company. So what is happening with Merck or Pfizer or Amazon is not happening with Google or Facebook. They vary from one company to another and thus are not comparable. Therefore, when you look at an earnings number, which is comprised of not only operating efficiency, but non-recurring items and future liabilities, you cannot use earnings as a comparable statistic between company A and company B because they contain these non-comparable items. Now, let's take a look. Traditional accounting ROE of IBM over on the right-hand side. And let's go back down into here, about midway down. Accounting return on equity of 133%. The following year, it goes down to 94%. The following year, down to 65%. Folks, think about this. If you had an investment that returned a 65% return on your original equity, you should sell your house and go out and buy that investment. My gosh, this traditional accounting return on equity is telling us to buy, buy, buy. Because folks, the stock market only goes up 9.5% a year. So if you have an accounting ROE of 133% or 65%, or anything that high, you would buy that investment. However, let's look at the traditional accounting clean surplus ROE, and you can see, like down here in 2013, 13.5%, that is the average return on equity, clean surplus return on equity, of the average stock in the S&P 500 and the Dow 30 is around 13.5%. Now, we can see that for IBM, the clean surplus accounting ROE is declining. And by the way, it is less volatile than the traditional accounting ROE. But the point I want to bring out is this ROE is going down. What does that mean? That means that the company is still growing its earnings, but with the declining ROE, it is growing those earnings at a decreasing rate each year. And folks, when you see a decreasing rate of growth of the earnings year after year after year, you got to stay away from that investment. You have to stay away from that stock. So traditional accounting ROE is telling us to buy, buy, buy IBM. Clean surplus accounting is telling us it's a dog, dog, dog. And when we look at the returns, and this was as of the end of January of this year, the black line is the S&P 500. Over the past five years, it was up about 60%. And that's before the coronavirus <laughs> debacle that sent the market down. And then we have IBM at a negative 15%. Folks, that's a difference of what, 75%? So IBM has failed us on all aspects. And if we use the traditional accounting ROE, return on equity, it would have failed us. Now, clean surplus accounting is a major shift in the valuation models. The return on equity in a clean surplus condition of portfolios exhibits a very high correlation with future total returns. Now, this was the subject of my doctoral dissertation published in 2002. Now, John Price, who was the author of The Conscientious Investor, and he has The Conscientious Investor software, emailed me one day and he said, can I use some of your book, meaning my book, in his book? And folks, that was a very, very nice compliment. And of course, I said yes, because he thought Clean Surplus Accounting was a great addition to the investment community. Okay, let's look at bank account A. And coming down here, we're looking at year one, and we start out with $100. We earn $10 
for that year, we retain the whole $10. So the second year, we're starting off with $110. That year, we learn, earn, that second year, we earn $11. We retain the whole $11, put it back into the bank or keep it in the bank. And the third year, we're starting out with $121. Now, we take the interest that we make in any one year, divide it by the amount of money we started that year with, and we get a return on equity. And you can see over here that for every year, we are earning a 10% return on equity. Now, folks, I want to tell you that the interest rate we get from a bank is the purest form of clean surplus accounting. And when you take the interest, divide it by the equity, we get a clean surplus return on equity. That's because the interest that we make in bank A or any bank is pure, pure earnings. Bank account B, same thing. We start out year one with $100. We make $10 that year. We put it back in the bank. We make $110. You can see where I'm going with this. Well, we take the interest in any one year, divide it by the amount of money we started that year out, and it gives us a clean surplus return on equity. And you can see this return on equity is declining. Where bank A was 10%, this bank's Bank B started out at 10% and now has an 8% return on equity. What does this mean? It means that the earnings are still growing. However, they are growing at a decreasing rate. And folks, remember what I said with IBM. Market does not like a decreasing rate of return in those earnings. So we look at bank A, we look at bank B, and bank A has equity in year five of $146. Now, why did we earn more interest? I'm looking at the top here. And that question, why did we earn more interest in year five than previous years? Because we had a larger equity base. Now, why did we have a higher asset base or equity base in year five? Because we retained all the earnings. Now, remember, Bank A has a clean surplus return on equity of 10%. Bank B has a clean surplus return on equity of 8%. Look at the equity in the bank. Bank A, $146 of equity. This is by year five. Bank B with $142. Now the question, the age old question, the question that should be in every investor's mind is if we had to purchase one of these bank accounts, which one would we be required to pay more for? That's bank A. Transpose this to your stocks. You want stocks that are increasing their earnings year after year are consistent with that. It grows their asset base, which means they make more and more earnings each year. And that stock would be worth more five years down the road than it is worth today and worth more than most other stocks out there. This is how you select stocks, folks, to perform better than everybody else and better than the S&P 500 index. Now, into which bank would you put your hard-earned dollars? And this is a little lesson. And real, well, we know Bank A, of course. And really, did you ever ask why one bank gave you a higher return than another bank? The question is, and I make fun of this in my seminars, is really, do you really have to know all about a company and what it does? Because folks, it's the numbers that count. As you learn how to use the numbers in a different sort of way, which is the clean surplus methodology, which is very easy to use because we make it simple for you, you will be able to pick the stocks that outperform because this is a predictability model. Okay, now, how do we know that everybody uses the wrong return on equity? How do we know that they're using their traditional accounting and not the clean surplus method? Well, because, well, first of all, clean surplus takes a lot of work. So let's go from there. But in any one year, just 25% of professional money managers can outperform the S&P 500. In the following year, just one third of the 25% or a total of 8% can outperform the averages two years in a row. And when we talk about professional money managers, we are talking about those folks who run the publicly traded mutual funds because we can track them. Bottom line, over any 10-year period, 96% of professional money managers cannot outperform the averages on a risk-adjusted basis. And this is from Morningstar in June of 2002. Now, the portfolio, what do we do with clean surplus accounting? We buy and hold a portfolio of mostly large cap stocks. Now, this is our basic portfolio. We pick 30 stocks each year with the highest and 
most consistent clean surplus return on equity. And I'm going to show you examples coming up. We put equal amounts of money into each position, hold for one year, and then between Christmas and New Year's, we replace the stocks if need be, and then rebalance the entire portfolio, and then we hold it for the following year. Now, let's look at Starbucks. Well, we do the same thing. We have to find a net income that is clean surplus. So even wherever we start down here at the bottom, Starbucks made $1.13. They took out 42 in dividends. They retained 71% or 71 cents. And they added 71 to this 456. And now in 2014, they have $5.27. So you can see, number one, we're using a different net income income, which is clean surplus net income, and we are developing an owner's equity in a clean surplus condition. In other words, whatever we retain in any one year, we add it to the book value. So this is not the book value. Now, book value is the same as owner's equity. This is not the book value or owner's equity you see on the balance sheet. We have to clean that up, thus clean surplus. And surplus means the earnings. So we have to clean up the owner's equity and we're using clean surplus net income and that gives us our return on equity in any one year. Now, remember I said before that the average stock in the S&P 500 has a return on equity, a clean surplus return on equity of 13.5%. Well, Starbucks is twice that. So this number right here is telling us that Starbucks should outperform the S&P 500 because it has a higher clean surplus return on equity, and it is very, very stable in here, folks. This is very, very nice. Now, when we look at the past five years, black line is the S&P 500, it's up 60%. Starbucks is up 92, 93%. So yes, as predicted, Starbucks has outperformed the S&P 500 index because that clean surplus return on equity tells us it will. So we look for a 10-year summary of the clean surplus return on equity, a high return on equity, a consistent return on equity. Now let's look at a summary of stocks we know and how they have performed. We are looking at the S&P 500 here. Now notice the year 2012. MasterCard, 28% ROE. Visa, 14% ROE. But that ROE is growing. S&P 500, American Express, less than the S&P 500. Capital One, less. Hartford Financial, less. We would expect MasterCard and Visa to outperform the S&P 500 and that these three stocks in here, American Express Capital One and Hartford Financial, would not outperform the S&P 500. And when we look at a chart, now remember, this is up to 2012. Here is MasterCard. Here is Visa. The black line is the S&P 500 and the other three stocks. American Express is equal with the S&P. The other two are below it. Now, let's go up to 2015. MasterCard and Visa are still leading the pack. So in other words, stocks that have been good in the past have a tendency to remain good in the future. Now, we look, bring it up to date, 2020, MasterCard, Visa, still outperforming 13.5%, not shown on here, of the S&P 500, still outperforming American Express Capital One, Hartford Financial. We look at this, and this is at the end of January, this past January, MasterCard and Visa still outperforming, black line S&P 500, the other three stocks which were predicted to underperform are underperforming. The exception is American Express, it is performing about equal to the S&P 500. Now, stocks on the radio that we talk about, we're looking at Amazon, we're looking at Apple, we're looking at Bookings, which is the old price line, Facebook, Five Below, Illumina. All these stocks are in our growth portfolio, all have ROEs higher than the averages, and our threshold is right around 20%. So we want to see stocks with clean surplus ROEs above 20%. Now, here's the 30 stocks in our growth portfolio folks the black line down here is the S&P 500 all 30 stocks are outperforming the S&P 500 that's what this magic number and I shouldn't call it magic that's how this number the clean surplus return on equity works folks it's a predictability model and over time if you pick stocks with high clean surplus ROEs and consistent clean surplus ROEs they will outperform the S&P 500 index and you will outperform 96% of professional money managers out there 
And just to show you some of the research that I did prior to 2002, over a four-year period, this red line is the average return over those four years of the S&P 500. This was an average four years with the S&P 500 returning a touch under 10%. Every portfolio, these are those green vertical lines here, every portfolio of 30 stocks predicted to outperform the S&P 500 did outperform during that four-year period. When we go to risk, now this is over a period of eight years, and, and this bottom line in here, this purple line is the S&P 500. Every month that the averages, the S&P 500 outperformed or had a positive month, we tracked it here. What did our portfolio do during those up months? And our portfolio totally outperformed on the upside. What about the downside? Well, over those eight years, every month that the S&P declined is this purple line. The blue line is our portfolio. Point I'm bringing out here is that we return excessive returns or more returns than the market in the up years and during the down years and down months, our portfolio performs along with the market. So in other words, we have better than average returns, but we do not take on more than average risk or more than market risk. Now, the research shows that, indeed, the accounting numbers when used in a clean surplus condition certainly do allow for the much-needed predictability that has so long been sought after, not only by the accounting profession, but the finance profession and the investment community as well. Now, again, those returns are portfolios of 30 stocks. Now, you know a little bit more about it. 14.6 per year, simple returns. The S&P 500, 9.3% per year. Compounded basis, $1 turns into, yes, or $100 turns into $529 profit. In other words, you would have, after these 18 years, you would have $629 and the S&P, you would have $366. That's how this works. But the portfolio is up 529%, which is just about doubling the S&P 500 of 266%. So our model portfolio is buy and hold with changes, if any, taking place place on the last trading day or the last trading week of the year and most stocks are in the S&P 500 index. How do we use our knowledge? We have a growth portfolio. We have a growth portfolio with insurance and these are all in our newsletters. We have trailing stops. We have index put options and that comes out in our Friday letter. The dividend growth and income portfolio for those of you who want about a 4% dividend per year plus 7 to 8% stock appreciation. And we have a daily repositioning letter. So just for attending, just for watching this, you get you can go to our website, buffettandbeyond.com. Buffett is spelled with two T's and two F's, buffettandbeyond.com. And you can get the two-week free trial video newsletters, two letters on Saturday, one every day during the week. You get our two portfolios. You will get a copy if you subscribe to either the $12.95 per month, folks, your continuing education for $12.95, that's less than a glass of wine when you go out to a restaurant. Or if you want the computer program included in that, $29.95. With either subscription, you get the men who moved Wall Street. And folks, I just want to let you know that is my picture on the cover. And if you order the book or if you get a full $29.95 subscription, I will send you an author signed book for free. And folks, this book will change the way you look at investments for the rest of your life. I guarantee it. So folks, thanks for attending Buffett and Beyond Stock Selection Methods. And we are at buffettandbeyond.com. Buffett and Beyond is one word. B-U-F-F-E-T-T-A-N-D-B-E-Y-O-N-D dot com. And folks, we're also on the radio and we'll send you the links to those radio programs. So we have videos, we have weekly videos, we have subscription letters, we have everything for everybody out there who is investing at a very, very low price. So remember, folks, if you want to live on the beach like Jimmy Buffett, you've got to learn how to invest like Warren Buffett.